Hey everybody, welcome back. It's a beautiful Sunday in the middle of March and uh, let's pop open some bubbly today. We're gonna pull this from the WTSO bottle shop. So stick around and let's taste it. Okay, so today we're going to the northern part of Italy, which is pretty interesting for sparkling wine. Uh, I think the first thing that comes to mind for everybody is Prosecco. So what specifically is the difference between Prosecco and just another sparkling wine? In Europe, uh, they name their wines after the region where they come from. So Prosecco is just from a specific region. It is made with the Prosecco grape. Uh, this one in particular comes from the Veneto region, which is in between uh, Verona and Venice, up in the north in the foothills of the Italian Alps. Uh, so where it's cooler, like we were talking about. Right, right. Uh, so the environment there is conducive to making sparkling wines like this. But no specific name for it, per se. It's just no, um, usually when they, they uh, make a sparkling wine in Italy, they call it a spumante. And this, like many fine quality sparkling wines from the northern part of Italy, is made uh, in the same way that fine champagne is too. So it's made in the bottle. In Italy, they call it metodo classico, the classic method. Is For, Prosecco the same method? Uh, prosecco is you typically made uh, in a more economical way, to use a term. <laughs> ah, I love that sound. Me too. <laughs> You can always tell the uh, quality of a sparkling wine by the size of its bubbles. Thank you, sir. You're welcome. So while we do have traditional regions with traditional rules for making sparkling wine in Italy, there's also sort of a, there's this new school that's making wines from rare grapes that don't necessarily fall into any specific category. And this wine here is one of them. Uh, it's made with a grape called Garganega. Never heard of it. Yeah, it's a very interesting indigenous Italian grape from the northern part of Italy. And it's more famously used in a wine called Suave. So, so I don't know if you've ever heard of Suave before. Rico Suave. Rico. <laughs> but the Suave is like a very famous Italian white wine. In this particular winery here, these are two brothers that have decided to make the, their entire career and their entire winery dedicated to celebrating this Garganega grape. And this wine ages for five years in the bottle and that's a really pent up, that's a lot of pent up energy there. And it's so fragrant when it was sitting here on the table, it, you could smell it from the, sitting on the table. Yeah, it, you totally could. It's really floral. It smells like, you know, this time of year it's spring and, and like uh, you, you get those white flowers growing outside, like the snowbells and things like that. It's dry, to your point, it's very fruity, so it gives the impression of kind of being sweet. Really nice. A little honey in there too, maybe. I don't know if you were getting that. But uh, really brisk, uh, nice froth in the mouth, and it's like very palate cleansing too. So it'd be perfect for having with like really like uh, fatty foods. You're getting that same minerally sort mm -hmm. of kind of taste, right? Like like almost like a mineral taste. Like a stone? Yes, mm -hmm. yes, yes. Yeah, it's interesting because um, in the ancient times, when the monks used to make wine, they actually used to taste the soil. It's definitely got sort of like a mineral backbone in it. And I guess we should probably point out that this is also a vintage sparkling wine. Uh, typically you see vintages declared in Champagne, but not Northern Italian sparkling wines. So let's go to food pairings. Um, something really light and frothy like this, uh, sort of sunshiny, I guess. I feel a little bit like when I drink it, I feel some sunshine in right, the air. Right. Takes me to the early spring and uh, Easter were, is around the corner. So I'm thinking eggs, I'm thinking brunch would probably be great with this. Uh, avocado toast would probably be perfect for something like this as well too. So what about like later fare, like salads, like a nissoir or something like oh, that? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. You know I mean? Yeah, I like that a lot. Actually, um, wine can be really hard to pair with greens like that, but something like this would be perfect with this nissoir salad, um, especially with that tuna in there too. Yeah, Little and, and eggs, egg. yep, the hard boiled eggs, perfect. One of the many things I love about working together with WTSO is that they tend to find these really off the beaten path wines like this that are really high quality as well too. So it's been a pleasure to taste this and to share it with you. You can find this at the WTSO bottle shop. I'll leave the link below this video. You can pick this up and all the other wines that we've had in prior premium wine club tastings, mix and match your set. And if you want to, you can even do a private tasting with me. To learn more about the world of wine and to get more savvy tasting, be sure to subscribe to the YouTube channel and you'll get plenty of videos like this. Thanks for drinking with me today. On behalf of WTSL, I'm Mark Supsing. Cheers, everybody.